Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another Juice Motor Parts tutorial. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about something slightly controversial, <clears throat> and that's port work. In particular, I'm going to give you guys a bit of an idea of how to do some porting, um, what's the, the mechanics behind it, how it works, and uh, things of that nature. So just follow along, and if you don't understand, feel free to leave any comments or shoot us an email. So for starters, uh, just to get a quick background of what porting is, uh, porting is when you adjust these pockets along the cylinder wall, the height. Uh, since in the two-stroke engine we don't have injectors, at least these two-stroke engines, um, fuel, is, fuel delivery is basically controlled by the piston on, on covering these ports along the cylinder wall. So in order to achieve certain effects, um, you would either have the port open at a certain time, that's measured usually in degrees, or uh, you would have the port open up at a certain time, etc, etc. So, the idea here is to get a balance for what you want to do. In particular, what we have here is a 60 or 66 or 80 cc. They're known by many many different uh, kinds. Uh, we have a cylinder here. This one has been ported, but it's also been damaged. This is more of a test cylinder, so don't mind the condition of it. Uh, this is strictly for demonstration purposes. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to go into a few aspects of porting. In particular, um, I'm going to talk about the exhaust port. So the exhaust port is located, it's the highest port along the cylinder wall that's responsible for letting the exhaust gases escape, as the name indicates. Um, according to Gordon Jennings, Gordon Jennings' two-stroke um, tuner's manual, uh, pretty legitimate resource, I may add, by the way, when you round out the corners of the, uh, of the exhaust port, this usually helps a lot with, um, with getting the exhaust gases out, because in a two-stroke engine, the, the, the ideal situation is when you, um, when you control fuel flow, and that is, that's in terms of intake gases and exhaust gases. The better you can control the, 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 uh, the flow characteristics, the better, the, the, more strong, the stronger your, um, your engine runs. So what that basically means is um, when you want to round out the corners of your exhaust port, here are two tools that I like to use. <clears throat> I like to use these tungsten carbide bits. I'll link that at the end of the video um, to where you can get them. These are eighth inch shanks by quarter inch heads and they do a fantastic job of, um, of getting, getting into the exhaust ports, intake ports, etc, etc. Uh, I also have a Dremel tool with a flex shaft. This is pretty much um, required if you want to do any kind of real port work. Or um, if you guys are kind of stuck in a situation where you don't have any of these power tools, what you can resort to is your handy dandy filing kit. This does a, a great job of, um, of, of uh, you know, if you really want to get into the, the ports and do some fine, really fine tuning, you can use these and go along the sides. It's probably going to take a little bit more time, but at the end of the day, you know, as long as you achieve the same effects, I think that's all that matters. So generally speaking, um, port work also takes, it takes a little time because you, you really need to have surgical precision in this case, and you have to really take your time and make sure you get the edges, camp for all the edges inside and this is all for the exhaust port. Um, I'm going to show on the screen right now an example of what um, rounding the edges should look like. Notice how along the walls everything is rounded out. Um, this, is the, this is the effect that you want to achieve so that you know, your, your piston ring gets enough clearance and no, nothing gets hooked. So um, rounding out can, can be done using, as I said, uh, tugs and carbide bits uh, and then uh, you can also use stone grinding wheels just to get it on, get it on in there and smoothen things out. And um, last but not least, at least for the exhaust port, is um, what you can also do is you can lift up the exhaust port. It's called, uh, it's called raising the exhaust port. What that does is that that takes advantage of the whole two-stroke cycle and it actually lessens the exhaust stroke. So what that means is when you have your piston on, on the inside here, when you raise the exhaust port, there's Less, there's less of a time that that exhaust port's open, so with, in turn that results in having higher RPMs. However, at the expense of uh, of low end power, the power of your engine, every two stroke engine, is dictated by the length of the exhaust stroke. That's the more time, more energy you get to you get to get out of your uh, spent fuel. So um, you, you can achieve higher RPMs by raising the exhaust port within reason. So um, I highly recommend before you guys start doing any serious port work and adjusting port timings. Um, take a look at the manual that I'm going to link in the description um, or even the article that I'm going to put in the description that gives you more of a perspective for exhaust port um, tunings. Something else that you can do to, um, as an alternative to porting the exhaust 
is you can use a piston and you can reduce sort of camphor the side of the piston by taking off small amounts and I mean small amounts like you know an eighth of an inch if that much and this achieves the same effect as uh, high heightening or raising the exhaust port the only difference is that these cost 25 bucks these cost 10 bucks so uh, if you end up making any mistakes while experimenting um, these are a lot more disposable in terms of you know it's, it's more of a cost effective solution and you achieve the same effect next I want to get to the intake um, tuning the intake can be done by um, in particular one way you can start is you can use some sandpaper and roughen up the intake like I have here what this does is that helps with fuel atomization um, that's good because it makes the fuel more digestible by the engine um, contrary to what most people think, you have to port and you have to port and polish the intake, but that's not true. Um, that having a little roughness to it is actually really good. Uh, another thing that you can do is notice how I have my piston here at top dead center. Um, you have a bit of the piston inside the exhaust port here. You want to remove that um, this 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 uh, this end of the piston skirt. What it should look like, you can take it to a grinder. And what it should look like is if you um, if you take it to grinder or cut it is you remove this this part of the piston skirt. So in turn, what 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 uh, what results is you have the skirt of the piston when it's at top dead center, but it's it's sort of ported in a sense. What that does is that gives the exhaust, I'm sorry, the intake um, more more room there, so more fuel can can get in there while it's at top dead center. If you guys can see that, so this is also good too. This gets a lot more fuel in there. It helps a lot with fuel delivery. So that's the intake, what you can do to the intake. Um, you can also raise the intake port, but again, that's getting into changing the, the actual timing of the engine, and I suggest that you guys do um, a little more research before you start raising or heightening anything. But the best things you can do to your motorized bicycle engine at this point is sort of round out all of the corners. You know, you can go back to your file or your, um, your tux and carbide bits if you guys have access to that. Now, um, another aspect of these engines that you can really kind of uh, improve is the transfer ports. Now the transfer ports are responsible for shooting shooting fuel into the uh, into the engine, into the combustion chamber. Uh, that's not what the intake port is responsible for as some, some people may also think. The intake port gets the fuel into the crankcase and the transfer ports are what um, shoots the fuel from the crankcase into the combustion chamber. This is, this is important. Now, as you guys can see here, um, what we have here is a transfer port burr. So it's this little piece right there. Right here somewhere. Hopefully you guys can see that. Perfect. So that's probably a result of the bad manufacturing process. Um, and it may not seem like it's much of a big deal because maybe, you know, the rings on the piston rings aren't, aren't there. So, you know, it doesn't seem like it's much of a big deal. But this actually is. Um, these transfer board burrs actually block the flow of fuel into the engine. So it's actually very important um, that you clean up that port. And uh, you'll, you'll see a huge difference in low-end performance. And I mean huge. Because think about it. This piston's going up and down the cylinder, you know, 60 times a second, 50, 60 times a second at max RPMs. Uh, every split second and every, you know, square inch or square millimeter of surface area counts. So these ports are being uncovered, you know, in fractions of a second. So keep in mind, you know, this is the time frames that we're working with, and at this point, every every piece of service area works uh, matters. So the way you can get to these um, t to these uh, transport burrs, burrs to clean it up, uh, you obviously probably can't do it with a file because you know these are small areas. Um, there's several tugs and carbide bits that you can use. Here I have an extended shank um, with a, with a with a cone tip. So this is excellent for getting into those small areas. Unfortunately, I don't think you can do it with a file. It gets it gets tricky. The best thing to do is, you know, with a rotary tool or air tool at this point. You know, you, you brace it on some kind of working surface, and you with you know with precision, you go in there and, and you clean up the ports. At the end, it, it also wouldn't um, it also wouldn't hurt to see if you can get like a piece of really fine grit sandpaper and get those uh, transfer ports. Just like pass it along so you can really deburr it, because you don't want any of these metal filings you know floating around your engine. So that's also for um, that's also what can be done in terms of the transfer port and uh, and whatnot. The last aspect that I want to kind of cover up 
um, before I finish up is cleanup. So after you're done uh, cleaning up all the ports, it's really important that you give everything a camphor. And um, that means you, you, you round all edges on all ports. This is important because you don't want your, your uh, piston rings to get caught on any burrs. So one, um, one way that you can do this is with some really fine sandpaper. Really, I'm, I'm talking about really fine. And you kind of, you can just go over the edges fr from the inside. Just get, get on in there and, um, and, and give each edge, you know, a camphor on, on the inside. Make sure that there aren't any burrs for the rings to get hooked onto. So yeah, uh, that's, that's also an important, an important aspect. After you're done porting, make sure all edges are filed down. It's extremely important. And in terms of cleanup, you know, you know that's, it's also really imperative that you don't have any metal filings flying around. Um, you want to make sure you clean this out really good. So you dunk it in some soap water, you know, use an, use an air assist system of some sort and blow off everything and then allow it to dry properly. And upon assembly, it's, it, it could help to you know, throw a few drops of 2 shook oil inside the combustion chamber and um, just kind of swivel it around. That could, that could help a lot with getting the, the, uh, the piston accustomed to this new jug because you've done quite a bit at this point. Alright guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this Juice Motor Parts tutorial. As always, check us out at JuiceMotorParts.com, the high performance tip section, for some more information about tuning and modifying your two-stroke engine. As always, get juiced.